and welcome to the FormFast webinar, Solutions to Simplify. I'm Aaron Vaught, Marketing Manager here at FormFast, and I'll be your host today. Discussing some of the products and services that FormFast offers to streamline manual processes in your hospital, help better organize your departments, and provide the data your hospital leaders need to make critical business decisions. you also get a peek at some of the new features that will be appearing in FormFast products soon. Get started, there are just a few housekeeping items to review. Thoughts, opinions throughout the event. Please submit either the QA or the chat panel on the right side of your screen at any time during the presentations. We'll like them and present them to the speaker at the end of the session. So, audio for our meeting will be broadcast through your computer speakers. If you have problems hearing the sound, send a message to the host, myself, so we can approve you to join the teleconference. If you're connected to the teleconference, please make sure your computer speakers are muted, otherwise you might hear an echo. This session will start with a presentation from West and Midwest Territory Managers, uh, Pat Murphy and Jordan Miller. Following that, we'll go into our question and answer portion of the session, and then at the end, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the upcoming FormFast webinars we have coming up soon. At this time, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today's session, Pat Murphy and Jordan Miller. Pat manages the Western Territory of the United States and Canada, and Jordan manages the Midwestern States. Both have extensive experience in the field of health IT and are knowledge experts on the subject of workflow automation, enterprise content management, and e-forms management. Lucky to have them as part of our team here at FormFest, and we are pleased to have them join us today. Pat, um, at this time, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Aaron. We, uh, we appreciate the, the introduction. Um, can you okay, first off? Uh, you, you might uh, mute your computer speakers. I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. I got that. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so, and uh, really, the the purpose of, of today's webinar is really to uh, as a forum to uh, customers on some of the products that we have available that uh, may have some value and uh, to you, uh, but also to share a little bit about what we are working on uh, throughout 2012. Uh, with that, I'm going to go into a quick agenda. Um, my screen, or you're on your desktop there. Yep, I can see it from my end. Refresh. Yep. Uh, for an agenda, we kind of already covered in uh, introductions. We're going to be talking about uh, web form imprint. That is, uh, you know, a purchase grade from the form imprint product that many customers already have. We're going to Solutions for e-signature uh, within your hospital. Discussing uh, which is form fast workflow. Uh, introduce fast flow content manager, which uh, complements our workflow platform for managing and storing non-paid content within your facility. We'll then spend some time talking a little bit about what we're working on this year. The winner of the iPad for the best workflow idea that was submitted. Uh, thank you for uh, everyone's ideas; they were great. great. And then we'll finish up. Uh, we'll try to get through as many questions uh, as we have time for. Let's go ahead and spend time talking about our web form imprint solution. So, web form imprint is our browser-based thin client. Uh, so it's a purchase upgrade from form imprint, and you'll. Find a lot, a, a lot of additional features and functions that uh, can present value to your organization. So, as a part of that, we we that product uh, more intuitive. We've updated the user interface to make it uh, a little easier to use for end users. We've added some things like uh, integration to uh, Active Directory or your LDAP sources. In uh, so as to having a local install on a machine, we now. Credentials online. This is a platform for launching e uh, launching a signature product. Uh, and client for that. 
retain some of the features that our customers like about form imprint, uh, the ability to print locally or to your favorite printer. We build abilities uh, onto the product to allow uh, you know admins and product the ability to see you know which forms are used most often, how many times they used, uh, who are the users consuming those forms, etc. Which we can make better businesses business decisions around how you utilize those forms. More configurability on the interface side, so the ability for users to manage their own settings and create their own favorite forms, uh, their applications, et cetera. We've, we've also added some sorting, sorting and filtering capabilities to the product. Again, whole user interface more user-friendly. The benefits of, of those additions within that product is really because we're maintaining this uh, at the browser level, uh, there's lessons for the IT team to manage. Uh, they can get to managing local installs on individual stations. So that's a big win for IT. It also increases uh, the security around the solution. Uh, so that's a benefit as well. Really, because we've updated the user uh, interface, the user experience is much more uh, um, and uh, easy to manage. Uh, really more visibility to what's happening at a high level within the system, so which forms are being consumed, how often, etc. This app, the solution sits on top of the form imprint product, uh, so it's, uh, it's each undertaking to install and, and start using this product pretty quickly. Because this is a browser-based solution, it opens up access to their users within your health system. So maybe not just within the four walls of the hospital, uh, but if you have physicians and clinics outside who need access to forms, uh, they get to that with a simple internet connection. The high-level overview of WebForm Imprint, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan now, and he's going to walk you through a quick demo of that solution. Miller, and uh, I'm going to be doing just a quick demo of some of the features and functionality in the new WebForm imprint uh, interface. Let me just refresh some things. Uh, essentially, the WebForm imprint client. And uh, when, when users present, you know, they might be presented with this login screen. Additionally, we tie into your Active Directory and LDAP credentials so that if your organization is leveraging single sign-on, uh, we can work with that to eliminate the need to access this screen. You can take a look at the end user uh, experience. This looks and feels a lot like the existing form imprint install, just it's running in a browser. So what that means to IT staff and form fast administration that we don't have to go around from device to device configuring individual clients. I can set one time on the web server, and then every single workstation that needs access to web form imprint can log in using those credentials. One of the big things to remember uh, is that with this latest version of web form imprint, I know that many of the clients that I am out talking in the field, they stay with form imprint, even though web form imprint has been available for a while, because they needed to filter on the workstation ID um, because they're floating lands and things of that sort. The latest version of WebForm Imprint can also address those needs. That if you're using a generic, you know, nursing floor login for all of your floating nursing staff, um, we can still persist you know, that type of authentic model. But essentially, what we're looking at here very, very similar to uh, a thick client form imprint um, with with some great elements built in. The left, we see tree. I know that when I'm out visiting sites, I'm sometimes overwhelmed by the number of jobs that things have been down into. And we, you know, we fully understand needing to get very, very granular with your forms. So what we want is even when we have to have all of that granularity, we want to make it very, very easy for you to present only what's needed to certain groups of users. So if you can filter that to an individual user or a group of users, um, filtering that job tree really will speak their ability to get to things that are important to them. Uh, because our goal is to provide what you need when you need it, when when you're working on products. Um, so what we're looking at here is just a, a quick and easy list of some jobs. You have some search capabilities. 
visibility built in here. So if we wish for everything that had summary, I could click search and I would see the patient admission summary. Uh, you know, real quick, if I would often find myself searching for that form, I could right click on that form and I could add it to my favorite. So I click add and I'm going to make that a favorite. And that job is now pushed up into my favorites list. And so to log in on any other workstation, I would still have that favorite loaded up into my configuration. So it gives your end users the ability to dynamically kind of configure uh, forms that are very, very important to them for, again, quick and easy access to what they need. Um, so very, very easy to do that. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that if, if the form behind this particular favorite was to change your update, they wouldn't necessarily have to you know, re-add that form. When the form was removed from the library, um, the favorite would, would so, you know, if, if your forms can decide that we're replacing this patient admission summary um, form with something else, you know, the favorite would essentially go away. So, you know, some additional features and functionality in the job tree that are very, very beneficial for users are the ability to preview forms. So, if I click on this particular form, it's going to load that form up so I can preview and see that form. Um, you know, so I can see if this is in fact the form that I really am looking for. Uh, additionally, I can select a patient data uh, and I can preview that form that way. So see what that looks like with all of the information filled out for that specific patient. Uh, you know, we'll, uh, another thing to note in the background, all of that's being audited and tracked. So for HIPAA compliance and things of that nature, we're logging who's viewing patient um, so it's very easy to run reports. And here in just a second, we'll take a look at that. Uh, we might be accessing, you know, data or, you know, preview that they, they maybe be doing. Um, so that's the job tree. Again, we want to make it very, very easy for your end users to find what they need, to generate what they need, and to get on providing care for the patient. Over here on the right-hand side, this is essentially the patient list. Probably very, very familiar to those of you who've seen form imprint. Um, again, it's that same patient list that's populated uh, by HL7 interface. So as those patients are admitted, discharged, and transferred, we're following suit and we're staying in tune with that. Um, we do have the ability to fill that. So if I wanted to filter it, you know, be based on a location or based on some other criteria, I could do that. Uh, we, additionally, we can tie the user to a specific location so that see, uh, an end user might not see patients that aren't on their floor or aren't in their location, something of that nature. So it would be very easy to groom this list uh, to only show relevant patients for a department, a floor, or you know, maybe even a facility, depending on the size. Um, so green this list and do this very, very easy. We can do through some of these additional fields as well. If we knew a last name or a medical record number, we could tie it in uh, to any of these Additionally, we want to make it very easy to customize this view. So I'm used to seeing, you know, instead of last name, first name, I to see the order of those columns, I can do that. Or if I wanted to see medical record number and then the account number, I can rearrange those columns on the fly, and it's going to save that view. So when I build this view custom to this view, when I log back in, it's going to look up exactly like I need it to. Additionally, you know, we've added some group by functionality. So one of the common, you know, cases for group functionality is let's say that I wanted to group by attending physician. Group by the attending physicians, what I see there um, is it's showing, you know, the, the difference. And then if I wanted to see Jordan Miller's patients, and I could select all of those patients, select the forms that I wanted as that physician was coming into his or her rounds, and I could generate those packets for that on that physician's behalf. Uh, very, very easy to do, you know, a use case like that. You know, we may want to do something like, let's group by patient and by room. So we can do these as well. So if I wanted to see all the beds that are filled in two north, and then all the patients that are in room 182 and 186, respectively, um, I'm going to be able to, to build that out. So very easy to customize this view to make it uh, easier for your end users to find, again, what they need when they need it. So this 
one more time. Um, again, the goal here, and we'll look at this in just a little bit when we when we talk through some of the e-signing functionality, is to just make it very, very easy for your users to see everything that they need. Um, so I'm going to log out real quick, and I'm going to log in as an administrator just so we can see some administrative enhancements as well. Uh, so I'm just going to log out. Go back to the screen and then visit the administrator. Okay. This is the administrator. Again, I'm presented with a view that's very similar to the other end users. Uh, but when I go to the user settings, I have the privileges to get to administration. And so this is where I set up all the different administrative functions of, you know, web form imprint and form imprint. And some of the benefits, again, are that we're considering this all on the server side. So rather than what you're having to do with your existing fit client form imprint installations, where you make the configuration and then you push out a file to each one of the workstations, I simply come in here. Oh, looks like my screen might be hanging a little bit. There we go. Looks like now. So, screen, um, you know, we monitor or, and configure the rest of the system. Uh, so, you know, I can configure different locations. I can configure different workstation IDs and things of that nature. Um, some of the other things that are very, very important are some of the site options. So here, for instance, I've enabled activity logging. Uh, so I wanted to turn up activity logging to see acts that are occurring on my particular deployment so that I could um, report on them. In the fit client world, what that would involve is me setting up a configuration file and then pushing all of those out to you know the individual workstations. Here, I just check the checkboxes, click set, and now I can go through and click on my reporting tab and run those reports to see hey, who's been previewing jobs and what have they been looking at? And if I run that, that report, I can see, you know, that um, this this record, uh, 424 at 1042, you know, p.m. So just a, a few moments ago when we were done demo, we see that, that data already in the report. We can schedule these to be run and kicked off. Um, but again, the reporting framework gives us a lot of intelligence into how our end users are using the system and kind of what we can do with that. Dashboarding, very, very, very powerful addition, um, you know, built right into the client, very, very easy to go in and select these different reports, select these different uh, dashboards so that we can see what we need. Manage and maintain, uh, you know, your web form imprint deployment. So we're going to back over to Pat, and we're going to, you know, kind of switch gears and talk about adding electronic signature to this mix and, and what that might mean. So we're going to move, as Jordan said, and talk about e-signature. And, and again, I'd like to go through some of the features and benefits of that solution um, you know, due to uh, what's happening within healthcare. So one of the, the, the big goals behind an e-signature initiative is to eliminate the, the paper consent form that uh, most hospitals have to deal with today. So a big win for facilities. Um, solution supports inpatient, uh, not and deadline processes for gathering signatures where they're needed. Uh, uh, ultimately, uh, for you, a patient, patient signature on a form might be needed throughout your facility. After that, is that we reduce the scanning that has to happen on the back end. Uh, integration to both your EMR and, and any archiving system that you have. So. I know a lot of McKesson and Meditech customers on the line. Uh, so I have uh, integration to both of those systems. We also have a variety of different signature devices. So depending upon whether we're talking about an inpatient admission or uh, talking to the patient signed discharge instructions, uh, we provide or we can work with the appropriate type of, of uh, devices to make that workflow better. Integration to your EMR from a from a from a logging standpoint. So as I admit a patient, 
I can launch the signature solution directly from that application. So you don't have to get into a lot of different application navigation. You simply you know, choose a button and that'll launch a solution seamless from that EMR. Benefits of that solution, why, uh, why are hospitals looking to adopt a e-signature? Number one is really an improved patient experience, increasing uh, the flow uh, from when they arrive at the hospital, touch points for that patient to have to sign a document. So we want to reduce that, uh, you know, and keep that pain focused on what they're there for. Uh, it is really uh, improved visibility to the care team. Often, a, in a paper-based environment, uh, a patient that comes in and gets registered, uh, folks are, are working with patient after they're registered. Some often don't want the consent file was truly captured, or if the consent form was for that patient, that some forces them to ask the patient to sign it again. So that also speaks to the, the overall patient experience. Our solution capturing that that consent file electronically and uh, instantly in the EMR opens up the um, visibility care team that in fact they do have the right consent on file and, and they can uh, move forward with the procedure. Uh, again, it reduces the need to print. So uh, in many cases, uh, they can ask them whether they want whether they want to copy that consent if they do. Uh, that admitting clerk can simply print it out. If not, uh, they can pay for and just keep the electronic file um, uh, within the system. It's organization to put some control around the process and, and some standardization. Uh, when you're in a paper environment, it's very hard to ensure that those processes are followed as they be. With an electronic, uh, we can uh, put a lot of control over how those signatures are are captured and where they're captured and when. I um, believe this solution also increases the patient flow throughout the hospital. For, uh, compliance and audit support. So again, working with patients electronically is going to, to assist in ensuring that uh, you know fall within the compliance of the hospital. But also uh, audits, whether those internal or external audits those documents electronically makes those much uh, more easy, easily reproduced uh, for those auditors so you can see what documents are on file. The overall process of making this electronic uh, increases the efficiency as well as the security of that process for the hospital. There's a number of devices that we support. Uh, signature capture, there's um, a, a popular configuration is to have a secondary monitor with a signature pad, very similar to what you see when you go to Home Depot or Walmart. With that, and they're comfortable viewing them on the screen. We also support tablet PCs. Uh, we have uh, uh, clipboards where we print the consent form, put it on the clipboard, patient to sign. The copy would uh, uh, while the electronic copy would flow back into the EMR. For larger that's uh, where we can display sections of the document uh, on the patient to uh, perform maybe things like check boxes. Kind of a visual of what that looks like. Uh, this configuration that you're looking at right now is uh, popular and it works well for our customers where have the secondary monitor displaying a portrait image of a consent form, uh, a signature pad um, for the patient where, where the admitting clerk indicates they sign. Uh, a little slow, there it is. This is a nice configuration. Uh, support a, a number of different configurations based on the needs of the hospital and based on the type of uh, procedure that we're working on. Find out when we talk about our roadmap in a little bit, we're also in the process of developing support for the iPad and other mobile devices. Uh, the concept here is that uh, we can we can this device and go anywhere in the hospital and get the signatures that we need for our patients. From here, I can simply shoot uh, click on that logo. That's going to launch a list of patients. 
information that I have responsibility for gathering signatures for. Information from that list is going to display uh, either a form or multiple form that I need to gather signatures for. Those uh, signature blocks that you see uh, on the device uh, going to enlarge so I can gather the signature that I need. I have all the signatures on that form. I just uh, press done, and then that one is going to be saved back in the, into the repository so it can flow to your EMR or to your archive. That high level overview of e signature, I'm going to turn it back over to Jordan. Uh, he's going to walk you through a quick demo. Sure. Yeah, and so, to, to launch the e signature client again, we're going to be doing that um, from Web4 Memory. For integration to the EMR is one of the key things um, that, that our client is looking to do because we want to simplify that process. Uh, how we automate capturing signatures on forms that may be needed. So that during a registration process in McKesson or Meditech or Paragon or whatever you may be using, um, rather than the clerk having to navigate out, find the forms that they need, we can simply build the logic to automate generating the forms for signature and then seamlessly launch this annotation client that we're going to be working with in just a moment. Um, so that's a, big, that's a big goal for many organizations. Seamless user experience for registration clerks that may be capturing signatures. Um, but we can also do this on demand. So, web form imprint, you know, if we imagine a situation where a patient was admitted to the ED and after observation, they might need to get admitted, you know, for surgery, um, and we need to capture an additional consent that wasn't captured uh, as admitted, we could do that on demand and capture this bedside. So the solution is very, very well uh, for both the inpatient setting as well as in clinics and also when we're bedside with the patient. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on a form that we we'll take a look at and get signed here um, in general for that patient, and then I'm going to click the, the e-signing button. Launching the signature client on uh, my device. And so when it pops up, what we see is an image of you know the forms that require signature as well as all of the demographic information for that particular patient. Uh, on the bottom right is that common block. And again, that would look however you know your uh, existing Dell blocks look today. Uh, but there are a couple things that I wanted to highlight you know as we're looking at this today. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit um, so we can take a look at the, the form here. Thing that I wanted to show um, with the new updated annotation client that's available with using the and web form imprint um, is the ability to come in and type in some additional data. So we can click into that field and I could say, I, Jordan Miller, you know, on behalf of Bernard Atkins, uh, so I'm going through, I could fill out some information that we may not have available in the ER. So, in particular, admission summary and acknowledgement form if the patient was incapacitated and they couldn't um, sign this you know, on their own or they couldn't fill out uh, on their own or whatever they needed, um, you know, we would be able to do that for them. Um, additionally, it's not just typing in text but other types of annotations as well such as checkboxes. So very, very common in this e-signature workflow, you know, an important message from Medicare or something like that. During the uh, registration process, as you're conducting the registration interview, you might be asking the question, these questions to the patient and selecting yes or no. In the picture that Pat just showed a few moments ago, where the secondary monitor is facing the patient, the patient see these checkboxes getting filled out in real time as the registration clerk was checking. So everything that we needed to, uh, you know, for this particular patient. Um, while we're in the interview, and you know, go to the next page where we've got some signatures that are required, um, we could say, okay, I'm going to capture the you know responsible party, who in this case is going to be Patrick Murphy. Uh, type in his name because it's not the patient, and capture the responsible party's signature. So it's just going to click the signing thing, and that is going to use the signature device that I have hooked up right here to find this document. So 
pulling out the pen, and he's going to sign it there on the pad. What we see is Pat Murphy's signature um, appearing right there. Uh, say that, that looks okay. And then the witness's signature. And in this case, I'm going to be acting as the witness, you know, showing how we can sign these different fields. Signature, and then we can go on, you know, uh, additionally filling out everything else that's needed. Um, the other great features are the fact that, you know, we can use the red box where the registration clerk is signing. We get that automatically filled out and time stamped with an electronic digital signature, leveraging that end user's Active Directory credentials. Just the fact that they're signed in and they're performing this registration can put a line of text on this form. Uh, you know, as machine text rather than a wet signature, if that's a if that's a requirement. So we make that and make sure that a registration clerk never has to sign, but also never forgets to. Um, so we we definitely have the accountability associated with this particular document. But that's a little bit about the, the electronic signature interface, what it looks like in the new annotation client, how some of the other annotations you know are available, um, and, and what what we can do with them. So. We Signature, you know, as Pat mentioned, one of the things very, very excited about is e-signature on the iPad. When we the end users, you know, when we see these solutions deployed out in the wild, we really recognize two different types of workflow. One, we're capturing signatures where we're sitting down with the patient and we have a desktop. Um, so we're, you know, interacting with the EMR on. The other is when we're out walking the floor and we need to capture, um, you know, consents and get signatures. Uh, when we're out in the field. So for that particular use case, um, mobile devices we see working very well as well. Um, other than using a computer on wheels with tethered devices to start and acquire those signatures, uh, being able to deploy on a tablet device like a, a Windows PC with a tablet form factor or a device like an I iPad offers a lot of it. So here we see we've got the FastFlow eSig application down in the bottom left. Corner. I'm just going to run through these screenshots in a little bit bigger uh, format, real quick. So we see that you know that, that's, that we can click the button, uh, loads up the patient list. Looks like we've got a little lag there. Uh, loads up the patient list, and we can click into one of those different patient names. Uh, so when we do that, we're going to load the patient's information in context, load all the forms that are required for the signature. Uh, we see the blue boxes that we can click. When I click into one of those. It brings up a larger version of that blue box for the patient to sign. They sign and then they finished, you know, they click done and the signature uh, appears on the form and they go through all of those different signature blocks until they get everything that they need. Um, so that's a little bit about what it looks like, you know, from the context of an iPad. But again, we're very, very excited about mobile devices, you know, to, to really capture. Uh, patient signatures at the bedside and at the point of care. Okay, well, thanks, Jordan. Um, we're going to uh, keep with our agenda and move on, and we're going to talk about. Uh, so, one of the things that we asked uh, everyone to do uh, today is to share your ideas for changes of work in your hospital. And a, a lot of great ideas. I just wanted to share some of those with you. Uh, before we get into some of the specifics. So uh, one idea was a, a new user access form. Uh, essentially, it's a form that starts in HR and flows through the various approvals and notifications that need to happen to everyone in the hospital aware of the new user. So they can be set up with the right equipment, set up with the right logins, and all those important things for them to be productive. Online form for uh, or tests. This was uh, the, the, the intent here was for remote loca locations or clinics or lab tests from the hospital. So they can do all of this uh, electronically online and communicate with the hospital more efficiently. Uh, can purchase uh, signature forms? So if uh, there's a uh, request to purchase something within the hospital, this form can get filled out online and be right to the appropriate people who need to review and approve those uh, purchases. Uh, privacy process, we thought this was a great idea, a creative idea uh, where um, when it changes, uh, you know, who uh, they want to visit or who has access uh, to contact patient, uh, 
uh, that form can be updated and wrapped so that everyone within the hospital can be notified uh, of, that, of those changes. Physician documentation, uh, this is a kind of change control management solution around uh, as physicians want to change the templates for their documentation. Uh, this is how uh, with, you know, drop-down uh, so they can easily, easily select uh, the change they, they would like to submit for that. Uh, workflow, so when something happens uh, on the, within the facility, uh, patient calls in the ER, for example, uh, that incident can be documented and reported on. Uh, and also the, the notifications for the people within the hospital who need to know that uh, can, can happen. One that was submitted was an employee evaluation. So the ability for things like peer review, um, three reviews for employees, the ability for them to be routed or filled out and then reported to the appropriate people who are viewing that employee. A uh, great idea as well. So, uh, and then I want to inter uh, introduce the concept of our workflow platform. So the first thing is that this is an enterprise solution. The intent is that. You can use it in both in a clinical setting, but also in, in, a, in a back office or administ administrative type setting. So that can handle uh, clinical administrative uses, uh, human resources. There's there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, uh, some of the forms need to be collected. Um, ID, supply chain, revenue, uh, as well as compliance. So in an enterprise platform, anytime there's an opportunity to automate and processes uh, more efficient. Uh, this is the use for that intent. Features of that, that workflow platform, uh, it's a nice platform, platform for all departments. Uh, often our customers start in one or two areas and merge that platform as they see new opportunities to, uh, to move to more of a paperless type of environment. The e-forms that you'll be working with, uh, the same form designer you're familiar with has used to uh, create those forms. Uh, so we can start it out of the gate uh, with a price you're familiar with. Uh, we also have the ability for task scheduling within the this, this system. It comes with rules-based workflow engine, so we can build logic into those workflows uh, based within those forms. Uh, we are very intuitive. Uh, Uh, for those individual departments, to your to your both your EMR as well as your ERP systems, provide web services interfaces so we can make calls into other systems to gather data or populate data within those EP forms. Reports and notifications to your various users. So if a purchase request was filled out, automatically an email. Eliminate a byproduct. 
product does, we eliminate the misplaced or lost documents. Uh, from the time we submit those forms, we're tracking them from each step of the process. So at any given time, a user can look into the system and see where that form is sitting. Uh, in the box. Uh, is that form currently sliding in? How long has it been there? And additionally, we can provide notifications to that user to let them know that they're you know, in box for too long. We also provide for structured data input, so we're 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 controlling that form is filled out. Or, or really, uh, you're determining how this form should be filled out. Are there missing fields? If there are, then we can control whether or not that form is routed forward. The ability to report off all those uh, attributes, uh, so we can again better understand uh, what that form is in the, in the process. Um, and administration tools to really manage the workflow and again see. Uh, where it stands, and you'll identify the bottlenecks. Uh, you can see that information so we can improve the process over time. Uh, really, uh, is, of course, another big uh, benefit of the solution. So, those um, can be very simple workflows. Uh, an example we give around that is a purchase or acquisition. Someone wants to buy something, they fill out a form, and it's routed. There might be logic built in. If a request is over a certain dollar amount, then we can uh, to the next level for, for, for you know, management or the executive team's approval. Um, and then, contrast to that, we also provide for very sophisticated type workflows where there's you know a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of different users that are involved, a lot of different approvals that need to happen. Uh, the process is complete. This is a little of our rack. Uh, audit workflow where a claim comes in, we review that, we fill out a form, and it gets routed to the, to the audit that need to review it. Uh, a few more examples. Uh, this is a reporting workflow where something happens within the facility, uh, the form gets filled out by the appropriate user, and again, it gets routed to the, the important, to the relevant people within that process. Also, we talked. To, uh, this was one of our ideas, actually, that was submitted for this webinar. Was a, was a human resources workflow where performance use staff evaluations can happen online, and that can be routed uh, to the various people who are reviewing that employee. So, actually, but uh, behind the scenes, we're managing all of that data. That we're gathering all of that data, and we're allowing. Uh, reporting and more analytics on that information so that the process is uh, in sync. We can look at the trends within that. So, for this incident reporting workflow allows us to see where are these different accidents happening within our hospital and how can we take steps to uh, eliminate what can happen in the future. So, it gives you more of a bird's eye view of what's happening within your process so you can make better decisions, uh, better business decisions around. Quick overview. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan now. He's going to walk through and, and uh, give you a quick demo of the fast flow of what the product. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just log into FastFlow uh, as we look at some of the features and functionalities there. Um, you know, just as we mentioned before with Web Form Imprint, integration to the EMR is key. When we're working about enterprise workflow, integrating with other types of portals is very, very important as well. And so what Show you is launching and initiating a workflow from within FastFlow, but this, these links and these uh, this functionality can also be embedded into existing portals. Uh, that you may be using SharePoint team side, you know, uh, employee management systems that are built into uh, ERP systems, HIS systems like Lawson or Peacock. Lots of options on how we can actually get to this information. But I'm going to log in as the administrator real quick, so I've got unfettered access to the system, and what it brings me into uh, you know, a list of uh, essentially workflows that I can start here. So here I see a bunch of different types of, of workflows that I've got broken out into a category called workflow demos. If I wanted to change categories, um, you know, I, I would simply be able to group these forms into like subsets. Um, so here we see I've got you know, workflow for annual reviews, for cancer stagings, for you know charge changes, for code query, for contract management, a whole host of workflow opportunities uh, for HR, incident reporting, I mean a whole
whole bunch of different groups and categories for different processes. We've worked with clients to help automate uh, throughout their enterprise. So the great thing these categories is they make logical sense when I need to find what I need. So it's very, very quick and easy for me to find and initiate a process. Additionally, we can restrict access based on those categories and based on those individual workflow items so that you know, not everyone can launch uh, an employee status change form or not everyone's going to have the ability to initiate a coding query. Um, so we can restrict that based on who they are uh, and what they can do. Essentially, you know, if I wanted to maybe to look at saying, say, a lab requisition or something of that nature, you know, I could just come in and find where that form exists, click the start button, and essentially it's going to bring me up, you know, directly into this lab form. So what I want to touch on here is that you know, a lot of our clients, you know, they're already doing something similar to this with form imprint today. They've built out non-clinical forms. They've built out forms for just requisition. They've built out paper forms for employee evaluations and reviews. They're storing them online in their forms library and then printing them out. And then they're doing the workflow, if you will, through an inner office mail envelope. The workflow really represents the ability to take that same form that you've built out online and really keep it in an electronic format and define what that process needs to look like as it's moving throughout your organization. Set up those notifications and alerts so that it hits the appropriate people inbox when it needs to. And then giving you the not only access to the information as it's flowing through the process, but also the discrete data that's captured within the form. So all this information about patient demographics, all this information about what specifically is being ordered is captured as discrete data. So we can take that data and we can export it as data that we can then feed or script into the EMR potentially, or feed and report on, you know, whatever we need to do there. So we have a lot of different things that we can we can do the solution because we're leveraging discrete data. You know, this is this is one particular example. Uh, I'm going to jump back and take a look at some of our IT forms. You know, IT change requests. So this is the form we're working with. Uh, looks like a little bit of lag on, on my screen for uh, WebEx to sync up. You know, we're waiting for this to sync up. Essentially, you know, work when I'm out talking with clients, it, it really kind of every sort of grouped into uh, a couple of different categories, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, when you're when you're thinking about where to leverage fast flow within my organization, you know, anytime you've got a process where data needs to be collected and then handed off to someone, and you need to be able to track all of that information, and you need to provide some accountability, and you need to have, you know, a physical artifact or a piece of or something like that uh, at the end of that process, that's a great example. Um, so that's the cat collect and store paradigm. Uh, another paradigm might be um, any time that we need to capture information, route it to different people for approval, time to you know, take that information and then based on what was entered to it, determine where it needs to go uh, and have the workflow chain path intelligently, that's going to be a good candidate for something we can build out in fast flow. You know, as, as we launch this particular change request form, you know, this again, it's going to look and feel a lot like the uh, the paper form the end users might be filling out already. So you know, they're going to be able to say, hey, we need to upgrade to form imprint. So specification. Um, Saw amazing reality during my demo. Solution upgrade process. So fill out this form, capture all the information that we need, specify whether or not we need a department director to approve, you know, things like drop down lists to um, what department you might want to route this to. So in this case, we'll send it to the IT department. That's going to be who ultimately gets 
gets notified, and then you know, IT department director might pull out this section for risk and impact assessment. So what I do then is I can go down to the bottom of this form and click, and it's use my inbox and travel directly to you know the, where it needs to go next uh, down in that workflow stream. So that that running to the next user very very easy to see. And what we can also see here is you know here that I have sent out. So I have a list of all the different things that have gone on out request, and I track where those things are. So it's very very powerful, especially in HR um, for things like time expense reports. For things like, um, gosh, of course, is a great one. Is any of those employee data changes? It's tax time this year, and I I just got dinged by the IRS, and now I need to update my withholdings from you know four to zero. Um, I'm going to submit that form, and I might call and call and call and see how that taken when it got processed. So this activity window provides that visibility and might help reduce some of those calls to IT or HR or any of the other departments. A lot of things that we can do with FastFlow, and in future webinars, we're going to be um, hitting on some of these you know, more specific workflow processes in grid detail. Um, you know, kind of to kind of cap off this this part of the demo, this is a way to put things online, build the workflow to route it around to the appropriate people, and what Pat's getting ready to talk Talk to you that we have those artifacts and that they're indexed and easily searchable. Thanks. Uh, about eight minutes left, so I'm going to move through uh, uh, these pretty quickly. Uh, so, in our high level understanding, our, our, we're going to talk about flow content manager. And as Drew indicated, this is, is the basic content management repository. For, for everything that you manage in FastFlow, but also other documentation that you have within your facility. That documentation can be imported like it would be with FastFlow, or it could be also scanned into the system. So if you look the left, there's a wide variety of ways that we can bring content into our content management systems. So scans, uh, faxes, uh, we can uh, direct, we can virtually into the, into the solution, multi devices, uh, different ways we can bring it in. We also support a large variety of file formats, which then as native applications into our system. So our plan, once we can manage the different file formats, is to securely transport that into the ECM solution in the back, and also index it and manage it uh, correctly. Uh, so have, you know, a full electronic record of all that content, so it's searchable, it's manual, and we report off that data. Make that you know available with a, with a couple of clicks to be able to view that content. Then the type of user that you are and the type of credentials that you have to access that. There's there's a few levels of granularity uh, as far as security goes. So, from your standpoint, um, again, this is a we're, we're positioning the solution as a repository for all of your non-related content. It supports and an imported content. Variety of document formats. Uh, we through a fast flow interface, we can workflow enable any scanned information into the content management solution. So you know, invoice I can scan the invoice and then route it to the appropriate department for approval. Uh, security available in the system, so we can restrict who has access to see which uh, particular documents. Uh, querying capabilities, so I can run a query and see all of my performance review and run a, a report on some of the invoices for, for a particular department to approve, et cetera. Uh, we have this integration so we can uh, launch uh, to these images or to these list of images uh, first that will uh, communicate over web services. And we also have a database querying capability so we can perform indexing the document, we can perform into third party systems and um, fully index that document. To output content out of that, so we can we can group things together and output them to a PDF or to TIFF images, uh, however you might want to output that information. This is a browser-based interface, so 
So with my credentials and an internet connection, I can get to any of the content that I have privilege to see within the system. Point is that Again, online access to all the content with a few clicks. Uh, you have the ability to open up uh, this across your facility uh, and get away from you know man paper in a in a cabinet. Streamlined approvals that are required uh, across your health system. You know, in paper storage and the filing cabinet methodology that uh, really restricts the flow of information within the hospital. So, uh, frees up you know about a valuable real estate. I'm going to go back to the idea of automating traditionally paper-based processes, moving away from that and, and gaining more automation within uh, that process. Also, again, in adoption of the policies and the procedures of the organizations, so um, this we're much more uh, able to accommodate uh, that type of approach. And increases the ability. Um, Reporting and portability within the solution, so we can see where these documents are within a particular process. Whose approval are we waiting for, etc. So, uh, just a quick overview of ECM. We're not going to have time to get into a demo today, but um, what I want to talk about is what we're working on for 2012, and there's some exciting things going on. So, January we released FastFlow Content Manager. Um, Again, that's a story for eForms. allows us to workflow enable scanned content and really manage all of your non-patient documentation across the hospital. Um, towards the end of the year, we're looking to release uh, support for the iPad. For the iPad. We're, we're in the process of redeveloping our products uh, for HTML5, which will allow to run applications you've seen today uh, on it, which will really free up uh, your your clinician your physicians to be able to see patient information or from, from, from where they might be. We signal capability on the iPad and Android devices. Uh, doing some, some major core platform enhancements uh, to our to our major product line. So we're we're in the good space uh, for all of our products. Uh, we continue down the path to ensure that our products are very usable and user friendly. Uh, we're in the number of dashboards that we provide within this, within this so you can have better visibility to where uh, processes stand. Uh, we're you know, in the number of turnkey applications uh, available to our customers so our customers can quickly adopt these solutions without you know, a ton of, uh, of implementation work. And we're on our, our, core, our core platform uh, is more of an agile development methodology. And even so our customers is when you have a feature that you need or when you have a, a solution that you're after, uh, we can work to respond to those needs and turn those solutions around to you more quickly. So it's a very important thing that we're working on in 2012. Uh, we're very receptive to our customer ideas around uh, development efforts on our end. So if you have a few that are, are great ideas that would uh, further uh, our, our products and make them easier to use and, and offer more value, Please let us know. You can submit those uh, to our You can submit those to Jordan or myself, and we'll be in the right hand. But that feedback uh, has been a, a thing for us to develop the products where we are today. Um, we'll, we'll get want to announce uh, who's won the iPad, and uh, this was a hard decision, but, but ultimately, uh, uh, Liz Care from Centegra Health System. Uh, you won the uh, the iPad for this webinar. Uh, your workflow was a surgical surgical consent form uh, that gets routed to the appropriate people for documenting the risks and benefits uh, for the patient, uh, and will ultimately uh, flow into the EMR to become a part of the patient record. So we thought we created use of our workflow platform. Uh, our, our solution is very capable of handling that solution. So. Uh, Congratulations. Um, you can let us know what color iPad you want, and uh, we'll get that ordered to you uh, just as we can. So this concludes our webinar for today. Um, we'll see if uh, Andrew or 
review to see if we have any questions. Uh, and uh, we'll get those questions and we'll let everyone get on with their busy day. Uh, thank you. Presentation, guys. We're going to open up questions at this time. Uh, feel free to send questions to us in the chat window on the right side of your screen. A question that we had come in um, in regards to web form imprint, if a user moves from one computer to another, will your favorites move with you? You know, the good thing about the, the user credentials that we're, we're leveraging with web form imprint, the fact that it's browser-based is all those settings are going to be that you log in. So as long as you're using a login that's specific to um, you know, a particular engine or so like, like Driller, um, anything to a different browser, I'm going to have those favorites in view. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. The question that came up was around the uh, implementation time frame for upgrading to web form print. Um, it's a little bit, but I would say on average our upgrade time frame is anywhere between four to eight weeks to upgrade it. Uh, there's, there's, um, we'll be integrating a lot of the settings of the form imprint into web form imprint, so there'll be a lot of time saved for that. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, if there's a server required for that solution, though, there may be some time to acquire that server and it's configured um, in your environment. But overall, it's a pretty uh, painless uh, upgrade process to move. On the e-signature side of things, the uh, implementation time frame around that. Generally speaking, um, we're uh, two to three months to implement a full e-signature solution, and that that just speaks to uh, the, um, to configure the environment and acquire the signature devices to determine the workflow behind that e-signature. Where are we doing that? Are we doing that at MIMS? Are we doing that in um, um, you know, side consent type environment, uh, generally speaking, two to three months to fully implement and bring live and, and citrus solution. Question regarding the availability of Webform Imprint, and Webform Imprint is available right now, um, so definitely something that you, you can you can upgrade to, um, and, and you know it's it's a very quick and upgrade something that we can typically get done in between four to eight weeks. Uh, web form imprint version 5.0. Some of you on the line already have web form imprint, uh, this version. Uh, if you have web form imprint, that upgrade is uh, included. So uh, if you'd like to uh, investigate the .o functionality, a lot of what Jordan talked about today, uh, send us, a, send us a, a note and we can make sure that you get in touch people to receive um, that upgrade. Absolutely come in uh, about whether or not these slides are going to be available, um, feel free to reach out to Pat or myself respectively, um, and we can definitely get you this information uh, on a requested basis. We have on the fast flow, so uh, can you attach uh, attachments in that workflow process? And the answer is yes. Uh, for, for any of those e-forms, we create a uh, basically an attach document within that form that allows you to upload spreadsheets, documents, peeps, uh, whatever whatever content that needs to uh, with that form can be attached directly by the user. Yeah, a great example of that is a, a time and expense um, workflow. I'm I'm currently working with one of my clients on building out a solution to enable all of their employees to time and expense forms online, and then, you know, if they went to a trade show or something like that, um, you know, a conference, for instance, be able to attach information uh, before the conference, right around for approval, get the okay to go, and after the conference, they'd be able to attach additional things like receipts from the hotel and any miscellaneous expenses uh, so they could get reimbursement for that. Uh, expenses is a, is a great example of a workflow where you might want to leverage attachments. Well, we're uh, over time for today. Um, there are a few other questions we had in that uh, we'll answer um, offline, uh, personally, with those who submitted those. Um, to, to 
Pat and Jordan for a great presentation today. Just briefly before we uh, close the session, I did want to mention webinars. Uh, every first Friday of the month, we have a FormFast users webinar uh, where we feature content um, that is applicable to FormFast end users. Uh, this this uh, webinar is going to be on May 4th at 11 a.m. Central Time. It's going to do a deeper dive on in fast flow and web form imprint, uh, focusing on some of those end user features. You can register for that at formfast.com slash user webinar. I have, as part of our educational webinar series, a uh, session entitled eSignature, the missing piece of the paperless puzzle. This will be on May 17th at 11 a.m. Central Time, focusing on eSignature solutions and some of the benefits that go along with that. You can go that webinar and all of our educational webinars at formfast.com slash webinars. If you saw something today that you're interested in, if you'd like to upgrade or see a demo uh, of FastFlow in, in greater detail or FastFlow Content Manager, we made it very easy for you. Uh, at the conclusion of this session, you're going to be presented with a page where you can click on a button to provide us some times that are best for you and your team to meet with us. Um, you can also click on buttons to register for the webinars that I mentioned. Thank you for the time to meet with us today. And thanks once again to Pat and Jordan for their, for their time and the great presentation. Uh, take a moment to register for the next webinars, and we'll see you then.